guys. I uh, promised you that I would step in here and uh, give you a little hint on that very first problem out of section 7.4 from the homework. Um, and uh, I'm probably going to do more than just give you a hint. <laughs> I just really like this problem. So uh, just watch the video and you're probably going to get pretty far along on, on how to do the problem. It's a nice uh, sort of variation on the theorem of Gauss from uh, this section that we proved in class. Remember that if you add up phi of d over all of the divisors d of n, it actually has to add up to exactly n. And that's the theorem that we, uh, that we have. And we can actually kind of use that theorem and model the proof of it a little bit to prove this homework problem. So this is the problem that um, I'm sure some of you may want a little bit of help with. Uh, it's kind of a two-part two proof, really. Um, so what we're doing here is we're adding up all of the phi of d's again. However, we're putting minus signs in front of some of them, depending on uh, whether n over d is even or odd. Now, the first thing is that if n is odd, so actually let me use a black marker so that it shows up really well. So if n is odd, right, then in that case, for all, for all divisors d of n, n over d is still odd, right? You can't take an odd number, which has no factors of 2 in it, and then divide something out of it and suddenly have factors of 2. That isn't going to happen. So n over d is, is still odd uh, if n started out being odd. And I think you can see that, well, that's for every d. So for every single d in this summation, you're going to be taking an odd power of negative 1, right? So that just basically means you're putting minus signs in front of all of the terms of this summation. And essentially, that makes it look just like this summation with a minus sign factored out. You can see you're going to get negative n here, right? So in the original theorem, we got n. Now with this minus sign that every single term will have, we can pull that minus sign out and we, we very quickly see that we're going to get negative n. So this case is actually pretty easy, okay? So, uh, so this leads quickly to the answer. The one that's more difficult is the, is the case where n is even. So uh, I'm going to erase uh, just the odd part right here. And of course, you can rewind it if you missed anything. Uh, rewind the video and take a look at it. Let's look at the case when n is even. OK. Uh, what you need to do in this case, there's a hint here in the book. Let me. Um, write down the hint here. So it says uh, write n as 2 to the k times capital N. All right, and I'm going to assume here um, that k is at least 1 because if, uh, well, k is at least 1 and capital N is odd. So we take out all of the factors of 2 that we can, and there has to be at least one factor of 2 because little n is even in this case, okay? So the book suggests that you do that, and then they make the point that, uh, here's what the, what the formula says, is that uh, this summation that you're trying to calculate, so where you add, uh, add up the terms where all of the divisors of n are considered, minus 1 to the n over d times phi of d. So it's exactly this formula here. We can actually break this into two parts, okay? And what are those two parts going to look like? Well, some of these terms are positive and some of them are negative. And what the hint is doing is it is splitting up those two terms apart for you. So if, for example, the D doesn't have all of the factors of 2 in it that little n does, then n over D would still be even, right? And that would mean that we would have positive phi of d right here, okay? And <laughs> which divisors would that be? Well, if you are a divisor of this number, but you don't actually have all of the factors of 2 in, inside of you, well, then that divisor actually has to divide, it has to be something that divides into this number, which is not quite the same as little n. Notice that this d right here, in this part of the summation, 
is missing at least one factor of two. Possibly more. It may, and, and in terms of what it has in common with capital M, who knows? It's going to have anything potentially in fact in common with capital M. But I do know that it's missing at least one factor of two um, because n over d is still even in this case. Okay. Remember, I have to add this summation is being computed over all divisors of little n, okay? So there are the divisors of little n that do have all of the factors of 2, in other words, that do have a 2 to the k in them. And then there's these divisors that are missing at least one of the factors of 2 that the number little n had. If d is missing even one factor of 2, if d has even one less factor of 2 than little n does, then when I take n over d, it's going to be um, an even number, and minus 1 to an even number would give me a plus sign. So I would be adding those terms. Okay. The rest of the terms, which we're going to be subtracting, are going to be those terms in this summation where n over d becomes odd. What that would require is that d, for these terms over here, the d has to have all of the factors of 2 that little n does, and then times, I'm going to call this d prime right here, times some other d prime where d prime actually divides the capital N part. Okay, So you have a bunch of terms here. All of them will have to have a divisor that has 2 to the k in them, and then some d prime. So I actually, the book does not put this into the hint, but I think that they should. Basically, what I think they should do is they should just do the summation here across all of the divisors of capital N, right? For each one of those, we're going to compute minus 1 to the n over d. Well, n over d is just going to be... Um, it's going to be an odd number, right? Because, well, take a look at it. n over d would be 2 to the k capital N over 2 to the k d prime. Remember, capital N is odd. Capital N is odd, so this is an odd number now. Because the, the numerator is odd. You can't possibly turn it into an even number if you divide by something. So this is an odd number. All of these terms are going to be odd powers of negative 1, and I'm factoring that out as a minus sign. Okay? And then what am I left with calculating here? Well, I'm calculating phi of d again. But look at what phi of d is going to be. It's going to be some power. So d has some powers of 2 in it times this odd number d prime. So phi of d Okay, I'm going to use the multiplicative property here. Phi of d is going to be phi of 2 to the k times phi of d prime. Right, exactly. So if we look at the formula, well, that's actually, okay, I'm sorry, that's actually basically what the hint is, is uh, telling you here. So it's going to be phi of d, I'm just going to put it in here now, phi of 2 to the k times phi of d prime. That's exactly what it is. Okay? And if you look at the hint in the book on this problem, this is essentially what they have, except they still, they still referred to this d prime as just d, which I don't like because it's really not the same d that we're looking at over here. Um, so I prefer to write d this way. Okay, so this then is, this then is the hint, and we're talking about the even case. Right? Now, what I want you to do is, first of all, you can calculate what this is. Okay, you can calculate what that is. And then I want you to think very carefully about how the theorem at the top could be applied to this. Right? What are you doing here? You're adding up phi of d, where d is running across all divisors of 2 to the k times capital N. If you just use this formula, you see that this first term is literally just going to be, in fact, let me just start erasing here, it's just going to be this number in the same way that 
these two numbers are the same here. This is exactly what this first term would add up to. 2 to the k minus 1 times capital M. Okay? Now over here, phi of 2 to the k, I'll let you think about it. It turns out it's 2 to the k minus 1, and I can put that on the outside. And then I once again have a very similar summation. I have d prime dividing capital M. Phi of d prime is being added up. This summation part is exactly capital M. I think I can let you take it from there. <laughs> okay, This minus this gives you exactly what you want. All right, I hope that was helpful. It was probably more helpful than it needed to be, but I just enjoy this problem a lot and wanted to share it with you. Um, you just have to write it up. And uh, if there's any other questions about any other problems from the assignment, of course I'm here to help you. Feel free to send me an email or stop by and see me on Friday. I should be around a, a whole lot on Friday. I've got, I've got a pretty busy day in the office, so I'll be happy to talk to you if, you, uh, if you're in the area. Okay, take care, guys. Thanks a lot.